Good morning. Welcome to the Morning Devo with Bo Willette. Pretty excited today. It's June 11th. I think yesterday I actually said May, so I'm super sorry about that. It's actually, we're in June, man. It's hard to believe, but we're already in June of 2021. Going to get through chapter 16 today, finish the book of 1 Corinthians. So it's kind of like, ding, ding, a successful uh, day. We're getting through another book of the Bible. You can always check out the archives at my YouTube channel at Bo Willette. You could always go there, look at the archives, and go through other books of the Bible as well. So if you want to get familiar with the Bible, maybe you're not so familiar with it, you want to go through it in a just a simple way, let the Bible just speak for itself, and I just comment on a few things, then um, this is for you. So hope you guys enjoy it too. So um, anyway, chapter 16. Let's get into this chapter and we will finish it up. So it says, now here are the directions about the money you are collecting to send to the Christians in Jerusalem. And by the way, these are the same directions I gave to the churches in Galatia. On every Lord's Day, each of you should put aside something from what you have earned during the week and use it for this offering. The amount depends on how much the Lord has helped you earn. Don't wait until I get there and then try to collect it all at once. When I come, I will send your loving gift with a letter to Jerusalem to be taken by trustworthy messengers you yourselves will choose. And if it seems wise for me to go along too, then we can travel together. So Paul's going to collect an offering for the church in Jerusalem. So Corinth was in Greece, and Paul would go to these places, these non-Jewish places, and after uh, his time there, and Paul spent a year and a half in Corinth, but what he would do is he would ask for a collection to be taken on the day of the Lord, or the Lord's day. That day, when you study the Bible, you come to find out that we're talking about the day of his resurrection. And hence why we gather on the Lord's Day, the day of that resurrection, which is a Sunday. And uh, what Paul would do is he they would collect an offering, and then he was helping those in the church in Jerusalem. So I love this, the idea of helping, the idea of collecting, the idea of giving, um, you know, those kind of things. There are people that need, and the church in Jerusalem was at need. And so the Corinths were encouraged to, not mandated, by the way, it wasn't like some mandate, like you got to do this. It was a get to. Hey, you get to help people out. <clears throat> and I hope you see, <clears throat> excuse me, giving as a, as a get to and not a got to. That, you know, and sometimes when you don't know people, <clears throat> I would imagine the people in, in Corinth didn't really know those in Jerusalem that well. They could have easily said, hey, well, Paul, we don't know them. I mean, we don't know them at all. You know, why are we doing that for them? But no, they 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 trusted Paul. And maybe they had some people that did come from Jerusalem up there to share. And, uh, uh, you know, they, though, had it on their heart, though, that just as God gave to them, so they should give as well. It's a get to. And, and so this is what Paul is doing. So it's it's beautiful, you know, and Paul says, hey, I don't want to, uh, you know, I want there to be accountability with money, and there should always be an accountability with money. That's always a good idea, too. You, you get that? Um, you know, it, Paul says, hey, it's not just me gathering a bunch of money and kind of going, <laughs> and, you know, running off into the into the sunset. Paul says, hey, you guys choose people um, amongst yourself to take that, and if if it's best that I go with them, then then I'll go, you know. If that if that's what seems fit and uh, then we'll go together and we'll go and we'll take that over to, um, you know, to Jerusalem. So that's that's the idea there. So sorry about my screen. It just went little little flicker. And, and that means I need to click something here to shut something off so it doesn't keep flickering on and off. So let's go on. I am coming to visit you after I have been to Macedonia first, but I will be staying there only for a little while. If you read the book of Acts, Paul had this really cool vision of someone in Macedonia saying, hey, come over here. So Paul certainly wanted to get over there. 
uh, and it was a cry for help, like those needing the gospel. And so you could read the book of Acts, um, and you could read about Paul's life in the historical book. Um, or you could go through our old devos, our archives on the book of Acts. Hey, that's, that's a good idea. It says, it could be that I will stay longer with you, perhaps all winter, and then you could send me on my next destination. This time I don't want to make just a passing visit and then go right on. I want to come and stay a while if the Lord will let me. I will be staying here at Ephesus until the holiday of Pentecost. For there is a wide open door for me to preach and teach here. So much is happening and there are many enemies. Very cool. I love these personal little sections, by the way. I think you just get a lot of really cool insight. And one of the cool insights I get from Paul is that he's just always very aware of opportunities to share the gospel. You, you get that. Hey, I'm in Ephesus. Things are going awesome. What does that mean? Well, I have a lot of opportunity to minister and to share. And so, man, it seems like a good place. Sometimes, you know, if, you know, we could kind of tell the will of God simply by if the well's dried up. You know, sometimes if you're in a place where it's just dry and you just don't have opportunity, then it's time to move on and find another place with opportunity. You know, and, and that, that sometimes happens. And you get the idea that Paul looked at things that way. Um, you know, that played a part in his discerning of whether to stay or whether to go. Um, so it plays a part in it. There's many things that play a part in a decision, whether to move or whether not to move, whether, you know, that kind of idea to go or not go. But one of the areas was, hey, is there opportunity, you know, to minister? So I want you to get this, is that his heart is always to minister to the lost. A and that's interesting. Like Paul, it, Paul's world was very chaotic. You know, if we were to go back to that day and look at his world, like just the way the world was, we wouldn't be like in our culture w going back in time. We would be like, this is a really unstable situation. People ain't living long. Um, and it's volatile in many ways, economically volatile, socially volatile. Um, the kind of governmental oppression was very uh, intense, which led to a volatile situation for families. Um, so there's a lot of problems, you know, and it would be easy to go, hey, let's go hunker down in the hills. Like, let's just go hunker down and just be wait there and but Paul you don't get that kind of vibe from Paul Paul was called to minister the gospel and in order to do that there needed to be people that didn't know the good news and so Paul's the way he chose things whether to go or whether to not always was regulated by is there opportunity to share with people who don't know the gospel. So if there was people that didn't know the gospel and the door was open, there was an opportunity for him to share and to continue to share with them, then he would stay. But if it wasn't the opportunity and the door was closed, he saw that as being God's will for him to move on. So Paul says, hey, I would love to visit you sooner maybe, but hey, I'm, I'm over here. I'm staying in Ephesus until the holiday of the Pentecost, right, which is after Passover. And he says, for there is a wide open door for me, right, to preach and to teach. And even though he says there's a lot of enemies in Ephesus, there is a lot of opportunity. And so sometimes we can focus too much on the enemies instead of the opportunity. Do you guys see that in the, in the passage there? Do you see the open door or are you just looking at the enemies? See, some people look at their surroundings and all they see is enemies. Man, their eyes are just glued on the enemies. 
the hostility. And they go, man, dude, I'm not going. You know, nope. And then other people look at the same culture and they go, opportunity, door open. And it's good to look at both situations and go, yeah, there's enemies. There's people that don't like Christianity. Or, and for whatever reason, they don't like it. And then there's people that then, but even in that, in that culture, there might be an opportunity, meaning there might be really a, 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 an area where you can share and people do listen and people are, are curious about what you're talking about. And so, you know, don't just look at the enemies, right? But look at the opportunities. If Timothy comes, make him feel at home. So Paul says, hey, Timothy, um, you know, he's hanging with me. And uh, if he comes to you, greet him well, right? For he is doing the Lord's work just as I am. Don't let anyone despise or ignore him because he is young. It says, but send him back to me happy with this time, uh, with his time among you. So Paul was hoping to send Timothy and he just gives some instructions that, hey, receive him, welcome him as you would me. Um, don't despise him. You know, Paul, Timothy was despised in, in the book of Timothy. We get this, that he was a younger guy. So people looked at him and, and uh, you know, we have to really admire. And instead of despising, we have to admire our young pastors. Um, and and I'm kind of middle of the road now, you know. Um, and uh, I remember being a young minister, you know, in my early 20s and all that. But I, I'm not there anymore. I'm quite farther ahead. And um, but, you know, what's great is I'm around some young pastors almost daily. And uh, and some of you are, too. And, yeah, we don't want to despise the wisdom that our young people have, but we want to listen to them. And what I find is they have a lot of great wisdom. And uh, so Paul says, hey, don't despise Timothy, um, but treat him as you would me. Invite him in. And, uh, you know, I'm looking to forward to seeing you. So you see his compassion, his desire to see the Corinthians once again. Um, and I love that. Um you know, I, I think it's great for us to visit other churches and become friends with them. And um, and then we have a desire to see them again. And I love that camaraderie within the body of Christ. It says, I begged Apollos. Apollos was another one that the current church members saw as a leader. And it says, I begged Apollos to visit you along with the others. But he thought that it was not at all God's will for him to go now. He will be seeing you later on when he has the opportunity. Good old Apollos. What does that name mean, Apollos? You know, I'm going to look it up because I just thought of something that was interesting. Um, let me look up Apollos and look up, let me, Apollos. What does that name mean? And I'm really curious what this means, you know, um, of course, it's Greek in origin. I know that. I know it's Greek in origin. But what does the name mean? That's what, oh, man, I can't. I, I, they're, they're looking at baby names online. You know, I don't want to know what what baby name. Like, I don't want to know that. Um, Apollo meaning strength. Yeah. And it was to be equated with Apollius, Louis, or something. Um, a god, an Anatolian, Anatolian god, whose name possibly means Father Lion. Uh, Lion. Uh, well, okay, it got to where I wanted to to go because uh, in Greek mythology, Apollo was the son of Zeus um, and Leto, and the twin of Artemis. Now, this is why I, I was doing this. This is why I did this, is because I knew that Apollos was a Greek. God, some kind of attachment to Zeus. I, I couldn't figure out which one. But uh, what I love about this is it's not like the dude went, man, I need a name change. You know, sometimes like this happens where, you know, we have a name, 
like uh that has like a it's rooted in something that's non-christian apollos it's rooted in a greek god that kind of idea and when we come to christianity we go man i got a greek god name that's bad you know we got to change it man no in christianity it's not like that it's not some weird cult where all of a sudden you got to you know, like, hey, don't do anything on Saturday because Saturday's Saturn. Get it? It's from Saturn, you know, and uh, the the god Saturn. And, and that's, and, you know, and we get it all into this uh, word gyration stuff. Um, no, Apollos was changed from the inside out, man. Um, you know, he had a new name, but it, it had nothing to do with Apollos. Um, he just, he, he was now, his, his god was, was Yahweh. And he was a follower of the Son of God, Jesus. And he kept his name, though, Apollos. But I want you to see that, is that even though his name had a, had a Greek background and a Greek God, what we would call like paganism or that kind of idea, um, he didn't necessarily just go, you know what, I'm ousting my name. I'm, t I'm scratching out my name. I don't want that name anymore. No. He, he knew that the name was just a name. You know, it was given to him. Okay, great. But that, he, that what really mattered was his behavior, his character, you know, who he was in, as a person. Um, and that's what we're, was going to judge him. See, many people probably would have looked at his name and judged him maybe based on his name, you know, and went like, oh, that guy's Apollo's. You know, that's that's a Greek God name. This guy must be awesome. Some people might have looked at it that way. Other people might have looked at it like, oh, man, that's Apollos. Man, that's a pagan name. This guy's a pagan. See, people will judge sometimes us for all kinds of different reasons that really are faulty. They really don't know you. They don't know your character. You know, the qualities within you. And if they just get to know you, they would go, oh, man, even though Apollos has that Greek god as pagan name, Greek god pagan name, that guy's a cool person. That guy really is loving. I hope in our day and age we cannot so much judge by the outer appearance, but we actually look at the character, the conduct of our character. We look at what, who we are, what we do in life, um, those kind of things. You know, instead of just looking on what seems to be on the outward. Man, that's a message f certainly for our day. So he, pay he wants Apollos to come visit, but he thought that it was not at all God's will. So P Apollos, you know, has this other idea of, hey, it doesn't look like it's God's will. We don't know why, but Apollos just, the idea is that, hey, they're all seeking the will of God. Isn't that cool? Individually. You know, and in Christianity... That makes some sense, and I have to remember that this morning. Someone might, in their individual walk with God, be like, hey, I don't, I don't believe that's the will of God for me. And all I can do is say, hey, well, that's between you and the Lord, man. I'm not to get in there. Now, I could get in there and be like, hey, you know, ask him some questions just to say, hey, how did you come to that conclusion? And nothing's wrong with that. That's okay to say, hey, how did you come to that conclusion? And they might say, you know what? I don't even know. And, and you might say, well, hey, maybe you should pray about it. And they go, yeah, that man, that's a good idea. Let me not just make that quick judgment. This is the will of God. I'm going to pray. So nothing's wrong with asking a brother or sister, hey, how did you come to that conclusion that that is the will of God for you? But they might say, hey, this is, this is in the word. I remember reading this in the word, and that's really hitting my heart. And so... That's that's why I'm discerning it that way. And I would just be like, hey, great. You know, you're reading it. You're, you're, so the word of God struck you in a certain area. Hey, that's between you and the Lord. You know, God be with you. I'm praying with you. I'm praying for you. That kind of idea. But I want you to see just the, uh, the little technicalities of the Christian life. You know, Paul doesn't say, oh, no, you go. You know, there's not like this forceful thing. You know, it wasn't, again, it's not this cultic thing where there's one guy just saying, go, and everybody goes. And, you know, everybody's seeking the Lord amongst themselves. Why? Well, let me just tell you this. In the New Testament, the Bible says we're all priests before the Lord. All of us are. We're all servants and ambassadors of Jesus Christ. 
every single one of us. So we all have been immersed in the Holy Spirit, meaning we have the Holy Spirit within us, and we all um, can discern the will of God individually. It doesn't mean that we don't need other people. That's not what we're saying, or not what I'm saying. But it means that we do have a very special, unique call individually with, the God, with God. And, and we discern that individually. And we can have people help us with discerning the call of God in our life. But ultimately, it's between you and the Lord, because the Holy Spirit indwells you. <laughs> and, uh, and you are the priest before the Lord, meaning you are the servant of God, right? And so, yeah, it's cool how that you see these things play out. And I kind of love that technicality, but it's neat this morning just to remind me that, you know, every Christian brother and sister has their own walk with the Lord. And I need to, I need to remember that, you know, and not be quick to judge, you know, but be, be slow to judge how the Lord's leading them and guiding them in their life. And so keep your eyes open for spiritual danger. Hey, that's a good Devo. Keep your eyes open for spiritual dan- danger. Stand true to the Lord. Another good one. Stand. It's the idea of standing firm, right? You know, get your ski poles out, pop them in the ground. You're firm, right? Super firm in the snow. I hope you get that picture. You know, you're skiing. You got to have those poles, right? They help balance you. Stand firm, right? And it says, act like men. What does that mean? I have no clue. Act like men. Uh, Well, what kind of men? That's for sure. Um, But notice what it says. Act like men, be strong. And whatever you do, do with kindness and love. I like that. Because sometimes when you just stop on act like men, which a lot of people do in our culture, hey, dude, be a man. You know, you're like, "Uh, okay, what does that mean? Now, Paul says, be strong. But also, he says, Act in kindness and in love. And I love that, right? So when he ta- when he's speaking probably to the leaders of the church of Corinth at this point, he's saying, hey, okay, act in kindness and in love and be strong. Be strong in what? Probably be strong in your faith. He's probably not saying be strong as in, you know, just lift a ton of weight. I don't think he's saying, hey, hit the gym. But be strong in your walk with God. Be strong to help those that are struggling or weak. Those kind of things. Um, And then it says, Do you remember Stephanus and his family? Question mark. (laughs) Real personal, huh? Do you remember this this family? They were the first to come to Christians in Greece, and they were uh, spending their lives helping and serving Christians everywhere. Please follow their instructions and do everything you can to help them as well as all others like them who work so hard at your side with such a real devotion. Isn't that great? We're doing a Devo and they had a strong devotion to God, meaning everything was really about their conscience was always on serving God, thinking about God. I am so glad for Stephanus, uh, Fortunatus, and Achaicus, have arrived here for a visit. They have been making a, up for the help you aren't here to give me. They have cheered me greatly and have been a wonderful encouragement to me, and I'm sure they will to you too. I hope you properly appreciate the work of such men as these. So Paul is just saying, hey, man, these guys were awesome. Great fellowship people. Man, I hope that you follow their example. It says the churches here in Asia send their loving greeting. Aquila and Priscilla send you love. And so do others who meet in their home for the church services. All the friends here have asked me to say hello to you for them and give each other a loving handshake or a loving kiss when you meet them. Um, Greet each other with a, a holy kiss. And I will write these final words of this letter with my own hand. If anyone does not love the Lord, that person is cursed. Yikes, right? Lord Jesus, come. May the love and favor of the Lord Jesus Christ rest upon you. May the love of you all, uh, may my love to you all, for we all belong to Jesus Christ. Man, and a really a cool ending. Um, there's so much there to unpack. You could unpack and do a message just on this, really, this ending passage. It's so kind of deep. But Aquila and Priscilla were 
very familiar with the church of Corinth, and they shared with Paul what was happening in that church when they w were there. And uh, so they uh, related a lot of the info that Paul's uh, talking to the Corinth or writing to the Corinth about. And, um, and then Paul just says, hey, love one another, greet one another. And then he, he shares that uh, we are to love like Christ loved. And, um, and that's really the end of the letter. Um, so it ends on a lot of love. So I guess what we can get out of that ending is, you know, hey, let's love. So it's great to see what people have said in the comment corner. It says, hey, y'all have a super blessed day. We're going to play golf. <laughs> golf with? Who knows? Uh, they don't know who they're going to play golf with. But uh, uh, I think Michael's on a trip. But, man, that's awesome. Go hit some golf balls. Um, and uh, Marsha, it's great hearing from you. Thanks so much for the encouragement. And uh, Paula, thank you so much for your encouragement as well. I'm glad you're learning a ton. And uh, yeah, we're trying to keep it simple for sure. Um, that's for my brain as well. <laughs> so you guys have a great one. If you have any questions, you can always call uh, my friends and your friends at A Reason for Hope at 5 o'clock today on the Facebook channel. So you guys have a great one. First Corinthians done in the books. Take care. Bye-bye.